Okay, uh, so welcome to this lab. So our sixth lab, we will try to use get familiar with the for loop and also range function in Python. Um, because the questions are a little bit complicated um, this time, so I put the instruction on the right side. Um, okay, so now let's go to our Cloud9 um, Python editor and make sure that we are in the folder of the local repository. And let's update our local repository first. And let's create a new Python file. So that is lab6.py. And we can now we can actually close this environment in uh, structure. So OK, so let's add a regional comment. So that is lab6 range function and for loop. OK, uh, so here are our uh, seven questions. So let's start with the first one, 3.1, which is very simple. So uh, we need to use a for loop if statement and also range function to, to print numbers from 0 to 5 except number 3. OK, so if you remember that in the lecture, we can see that for i in range. OK, so by default, if we don't type the minimum value, so if we just give it a maximum value, and we print <coughs> i, so this will give us numbers starting from 0 until this number minus 1. OK, until this number minus 1. So actually, if we want number from 0 to 5, so we should use this number plus 1, which is 6. OK, uh, so now if we run it, and we can see we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. OK, so but we want to skip number 3 and also use by using the if statement. Uh, so you can pause the video here and also think about how you can use uh, if statement within this for loop. All right, so here my solution is that I just simply add a if statement. I will say if i does not equal to 3. Okay, and I will put this one within this if block so if i does not equal to 3 i will print the i so if the current value does not equal to 3 i will print the current value so now if i run it okay so i have 1 0 1 2 4 5 okay so that worked perfect uh, for 3.1 all right uh, so let's move on 3.2 OK, so 3.2345. So actually, they are um, <laughs> they are similar. So if you know how to do one of them, so you will be you should be able to do the others. OK, so 3.2 is asking that I want to calculate the factorial. OK, so that means that uh, starting from for five, so that five times four times three times two times one. OK, uh, so how can you do that by using a for loop? So you can pause the video here again to think about your own solutions. I mean, the really important part is try it on your own. Otherwise, if you just see my solutions directly, so uh, you may not learn a lot. So uh, the most important part of those labs is that uh, just try it on your own first so even you have errors and even you don't have the, the right answers it doesn't matter so you, you have to try it by your own on your own first and next you can see my solution okay all right so here so to calculate the result so i need actually define a variable uh, to maintain the result so first for example i will call it the result which I gave it an initial value as one. Okay, I will maintain result and I gave it 
uh, initial value as one. And I will say for i in range, so in this case, I will start from one until six. Okay, because that will give us uh, the number from one until five. Okay, and next, so this is a magic part. So if you haven't, if this is your first programming class, so I will use result equals result times the current value. Okay, and next I will print the final result. Okay, so now let's run it. And you can see the right, the answer is right, so that's 120. Okay, so how does that work? So it's the solution is very simple. Okay, um, let's so now let's add a breakpoint as we said in the lecture. So let's enable this debugging mode and let's see how, why does it work. So let's run it again. So here we have defined the result. Okay, uh, so right now the result is one and also the current value is also one. Okay, so uh, let's remove. So here, let's see, we, we are interested in the number i, and also we are interested in the variable of result. Okay, so let's look at those two values. So initially, the result equals 1, that is a default value, that, and also initial value that we set. And also, this is the loop iterations. So in the first iteration, i equals 1. So now result equals 1 times i. Okay. So now if we continue, we can see right now result still equals 1 because 1 times 1 equals 1. Okay. And that is also the reason that y I set initial value as 1 because I 1 times anything still equals and the, uh, the, the, the number itself. So so that's why I set result initial value of the result as one. And also I use result variable to store the result of each of the calculation at within each iteration. So now we continue to this iteration. So right now we can say the i equals two. And now within this iteration, so result equals one times two. Okay. So after this iteration, we can say result result equals two because that is result at one times two. And next, in the third iteration, i equals three and result equals two. So after this calculation, result equals two times three. So result now equals six. And we can move on. So now within the current Next iteration, i equals 4 and result equals 6. So after this calculation, result equals 24. So that is 4 times 6. And we go to the next iteration. So that is our, our last iteration. So result equals 24 times 5. So result equals 120. And now we are done with this for loop. So we go ahead to print out the final result. So that is 120. So that is how we calculated from starting from one until five. So one times two times three times four times five. Okay, so pause the video here. Take your time, try to understand what we just did. All right, so hopefully now you're uh, fine with this one. So let's remove the breakpoint and also disable the debugging mode. Okay, so now let's go to 3.3. .3. So 3.3 .3 is a similar. So essentially we want the result that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay, so you can follow this example Okay, and also think about how you're going to design your own solution to calculate this one. Okay, uh, so pause the video here and also try your own solution first. Okay, so now let's start. So actually we can just simply copy this 
piece of the Python code, and we just make a few change. So first, uh, we still need the result, but this time I'm not going to use one as the initial value, but I will use zero. Okay, and also for the calculation, we're using plus, not the multiple. Multiply. Why? That is because we need to calculate 1 plus 2 plus 3. So that's why we need the plus here. And also the initial value of 0 will not change the final result. We are not generate uh, influence of the final result. So now let's run it. And you can see the right answer is uh, 15. So that is correct. If you have a 16, that it might be because you didn't change the result initial value of the result to zero. As we just did, so let's add a breakpoint. Okay, and also let's go to debugging mode and let's look at the detail. Okay, so right now we can see that i equals one and also result equals zero. So now the calculation is result equals zero plus one. Okay, so that's why that I set initial value of the result as zero because that will not influence the real result, the final result. Okay, so now if we go back to the next iteration, so right now the i equals two and result equals one, result equals one, two, one plus two. Okay, so now result equals three. And we go to the next iteration i equals 3 and result equals 3 and now for this calculation result equals 3 plus 3 so result now becomes 6 and we go to next iteration where i equals 4 result equals 6 and in this calculation result equals 6 plus 4 so result will become 10 and we go to our final iteration where i equals 5 and result equals 10. So in this calculation, result equals 10 plus 5. Okay, so that is our final result, that is 15. And now we reach the end of this for loop. Okay, so we just print out this result, which is uh, 15. Okay, uh, so that is for number 3.3. .3. And now you can try it on, see if you can finish number 3.4. All right, so now let's, my solution, so 3.4. So again, I, it, is, uh, it is similar to 3.2 again, so I will use that as uh, our uh, template. So because we are using multiple, so I'm going still using result default value as one. However, we are going to calculate starting from 3 until 3 times 4 times 5 until 8. So we need to change something in this range function. So the smallest value is 3 until, so we need to reach 8. So we have defined 9 here. Okay, and now let's calculate the result. And that is this one. Okay, and you can use a calculator to double check whether or not this is the right answer. Okay, and you can also pause the video here and also to try to spend some time to think about how that worked. Okay, uh, so hopefully now you're fine with this 3.4. So now let's go to 3.5. So 3.5 looks like a little bit complicated so that you need to calculate uh, this one divided by this one. Okay, uh, so I will give you some time so you can pause the video here again to try your own solution. Okay, uh, so you may, you might be wondering that, so you, you may need two for loop. So the first for loop calculate the, this part, the top part, the second for loop calculate result of the bottom part. And next you are using the result of the top divide by the result of the bottom. All right, so that is one solution, but so my solution will be that, so before I go to Python, so I can simplify this calculation, right? So that actually equals eight 
times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Right? So we can simplify this calculation. So, so this one actually equals just this part. Right? So we just need to do this part. And that will make uh, this calculation is far way easier. So we just simply copy this one. So that start from 4 until 8. OK, so if we want to reach 8, so we have used 9 in this range function. And now if I run it, all right, so here I have my right, right answer. OK, so that is my solution. So before you do everything in Python, and if you can simplify the calculation mathematically, so why not do that first? OK. OK, so that is my solution, and I'm going to delete that. All right. Um, for 3.6, can you use a for loop to count the number of the words in this string? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 words in this string. OK, so can you use a for loop to count the number of the words in this string? So 3.6. Six. Okay. So first, let's let's type this string. This is my six string. Okay. So can I use a for loop to count the number of the words in this string. So in one of our previous lab, we know that if we want to convert the string into separate word, we can use a split function. Okay. So by using this split function, we can convert this string into a list. OK, so we can convert this string into a list. OK, and next we can use that len function, so the length function, OK, to count the number of items in that list. OK, so we have number five. But right now, I'm asking that use a for loop to count the number of the words in this string. So pause the video here and also think about how you can do that by using a for loop. OK, so we know that uh, with a for loop, we can access each individual items uh, within a list. So here, let's say uh, for the single word in this string list. So we can treat that one as string list. And we can access each individual word, right? So now let's write. OK, so now we can access each individual word. And now if you remember, think about that. So the number of the times that we, we print each individual word OK, so if we count the number of times that we print in those words, that equals number of the words in this string. OK, so that equals number of the words in this string. So I'm going to define another variable. So I will use result again equals zero. OK, so when I'm printing those words, I will say, OK, result equals result plus one. OK. So that means that every time when I count a new word and single word, I will let the result increase by one. And finally, if I print the result, OK, it will equals the number of times that we printing the word, which also equals the number of the word in that string. All right. OK. And Finally, I realized, OK, so I actually I don't need to print the word. So I just use the result equals 0, which is the initial value, and also count the number of times that I need to access each single word. And finally, I just print the result. OK, and I have the right result, which is 5. OK, great. And the number 3.7 
actually this is a piece of the real Twitter data that I copied. Okay, so uh, let's first define a dictionary as uh, this tweet. So you can pause the video here and also finish typing this dictionary. Okay, all right. So now I just finished typing this dictionary. So we have one, two, three, four, four key value pairs. So the first one, favorite count, language, coordinates, and those entities. Okay, so the question is asking that can you use a for loop to count the number of the hashtags? So here we have the three hashtags. And actually, we know that to count the number of the items in a list, we can follow uh, the approach here in 3.6. However, the, the challenging part is that how can you access this list? OK, so this list is a value within this dictionary. OK, so if we print out the the my tweet dictionary, we have this dictionary. However, this list is embedded in this dictionary, okay, which is also a value of this entity case. Okay, so the actually the question is really how you can access this list that is within a nested dictionary. Okay, so think about that by yourself. Okay, so Let's tr first let's try to access the value of the entities. So let's copy the entities. And now let's print uh, the value of the entities. So this will return a dictionary. OK, so this will return a dictionary. And now we can treat this one as the dictionary of this as this dictionary. And now to access this list, we can just call the case in that dictionary so that we just follow that and call that case. And now if we write, <clears throat> now we are able to access this list. Okay, so this list, so this stuff equals this list. All right, so this stuff equals this list. So now the question is go back to the 3.6. So can you count the number of items in the list by using a for loop? And of course, yes. So we can just say result equals zero. And now we can see for hashtag. So here I just give it a temporary variable in this hashtag list that is this stuff okay colon i will see result equals result plus one and finally i print the result and actually i don't need to print um, the hashtag list okay and i have an error okay uh, i have a typo so result was not defined All right. Okay, so now if I write, so I have the right answer of three. Okay, so that's all for this lab. And uh, we know that our lectures are shorter, but our lab are becoming longer. Um, so you may want to watch this video multiple times and make sure that you do understand all the Python code for all those questions. All right, so let's just now let's make sure that we upload our code to GitHub. So let's see git add all dash dash all and git commit. Okay, so this is our lab six. Okay, and finally let's type gate push okay tabs of gate push and everything will be uploaded to uh, github so let's check the github
and now you can see uh, lab 6 should be there, okay? And you just need to submit this URL on Canvas.